understanding how the width of a tire can dramatically affect its performance might just be one of the most misunderstood characteristics of a tire when it comes to purchasing a new set. And so today we answer the age old debate of which one is better, a narrower tire or a wider tire. Hey, what's up guys, Josh from Trobolt and most of us look for two things when searching for a new set of tires. One is the value and two is the performance. Granted, there are those who care more about how the tire looks on a vehicle, but for most of us, we want a tire that is going to offer the best performance and usually the best price. Now, when I say that the width of a tire is quite possibly the most misunderstood part of choosing a tire, it's because most of us will consider the performance of the tire's tread pattern first, then maybe the designation category of the tire. Is it an all season, all terrain, hybrid or mud terrain tire? Is it rated for mud and snow? Does it have the three peak mountain snowflake rated? All of these questions are definitely important but if we don't match the correct width of the tire to our vehicle's needs, then it's not going to matter what the tire is. Might as well just run drag slicks for that matter. First thing we should be considering when shopping for a new set of tires is the size of the tire, height and width that's going to work best for us. Then once we figure that out, we can narrow it down to the other performance characteristics of the tire. But how do we know how to match the perfect size of the tire to our own particular vehicle needs? Well, simple. It starts by understanding how the width of a tire affects the tire's performance, and that boils down to one thing, the weight distribution of the vehicle through the tire's contact patch. Think of a narrower tire as you would think of a pizza cutter. It's designed to break through the crust because of its sharper edge. Now, imagine a wider tire is more like a bread roller or a dough rolling pin. Those are designed to roll over the top of something even as soft as dough without cutting through it. Same concept with tires, and here's why. It all boils down to PSI, and not so much the air pressure that's in the tire, although that does play a major part to the tire's performance, especially while aired down for more off-road traction, but rather the contact pressure per square inch measured in pounds and is divided by the weight of the vehicle. A narrower tire, like a pizza cutter, will have a higher amount of pounds or more weight of pressure per square inch through a smaller contact area compared to a wider tire that distributes more of the weight of the vehicle throughout the wide tire's contact patch, resulting in having a lower number of pounds per square inch of pressure because the weight is more distributed throughout the tire's contact patch, just like a rolling pin, clear as mud, right? A quick example of that is a lighter vehicle like a two-door Jeep Wrangler running a 34 by nine and a half inch wide tire like a Super Swamper TSL. And it'll have more bite per square inch than let's say a 35 inch tall tire that's 12 and a half inches wide. Or another example is, let's say we have a heavier vehicle like a four-door Jeep Wrangler running 35 inch tall tires that are 12 and a half inches wide. And because the Wrangler four-door is heavier, but the tires are wider, the effect of the weight might just be the same amount of pressure per square inch through the tire's contact patch as what the lighter two-door Wrangler with narrower tires is. So then with that said, how do we know how to match the correct width of the tire to the weight of our vehicle? And the answer is, it all depends on what we're using our vehicles for and how we're using our vehicle. A vehicle designed for mud running will typically have a wider size tire to gain more flotation on top of the mud, whereas a rock crawling buggy won't necessarily have a super narrow tire, but will often have tires that are between 12 and a half inches wide up to about 14 inches wide. But what about the majority of us who use our vehicles as daily drivers, but often like to hit the trails on the weekends? Well, too wide of a tire and it'll create more rolling resistance, making the engine work harder than it needs to and ultimately causing more wear and tear on the driveline and consuming a lot more fuel. Plus, not to mention, too wide of a tire and it'll start to hydroplane over water or float too much over snow and ice and will be much easier to lose control over your steering and your vehicle. Wider tires also will require additional clearance for the suspension components, upper control arms, coilovers, leaf springs, and or lower control arms, which will require a wheel with more of a negative offset. 
The challenge with increasing the negative offset in addition to installing a wider tire is that even though we may have gained plenty of clearance to not have our tire interfere with the suspension components, chances are the front tires are now going to make contact with the front bumper or behind the tire on the inner fender liner or even the rocker panels and possibly the cab mounts, depending on the vehicle, of course. Therefore, we might need to purchase a new set of wheels or even spacers to get that additional clearance we're looking for. And guys, just throwing this out there, but if you did end up purchasing your tires from us here at Trail Built and wanted or needed to get a new set of tires to go with them, we do offer free mounting and balancing of your new wheel and tire package. Plus, if you live in any state in the lower 48, we even ship them to you for free as well. And guys, for more information on wheels and tires, we'll have that link posted in the description below. But anyways, having too narrow of a tire and you'll start to lose traction properties while out in the trails. Sometimes a little wider tire will be a bit of an advantage while trying to climb up and over rocks or other various trail obstacles, especially when trying to get through the thick gooey mud. Now, if we knew the exact weight of our vehicle, either fully loaded with all of our gear, a full tank of fuel, our passengers, and even our family pets, or even how we have it loaded for our daily commutes, we can then figure out what the best width of tire should be. But because most of us don't know exactly what our vehicle weighs, the next best step to figure out what the weight of our vehicle is if you have a pickup truck, you can base your weight numbers off the GVWR or gross vehicle weight rating. That's listed on the little tag on the driver's side door jam or in the owner's manual. Or maybe you don't have a pickup truck, but the GVWR is still listed on the door jam or in the owner's manual. If it is, then that's great. If not, you might need to find a local trucking scale to get your vehicle's weight or Google can definitely help there as well. So excluding showboaters, brodozers, or the guys who play on top of the mud and snow, the ones who have the super wides paired with the super lights and float over the top of everything. Well, besides them, lighter vehicles that fit within the load carrying capacities of 2,500 pounds per tire or less, which is a load index of about 113 or C load or less, then the tire industry limits the width of the tires to about 10 and a half inches wide or narrower, except for maybe a few exceptions. And this is speaking to all season tires, all terrain tires, hybrid and mud terrain types of tires, fitting wheel diameters that are between 17 and 20 inches. Once you start getting to load range D rating and load indexes of 114 and or a 2600 pound per tire or more, then you start seeing the 12 and a half inch wide tires combined in with the narrower tires. But even at that low of a weight rating, which means my vehicle is still pretty light yet, I would want to run a 10 and a half inch wide tire or narrower to get the most traction out of the tire because of having a greater number of pounds of pressure per square inch. Personally, and this is just my opinion from my experiences, but I wouldn't even want to consider a 12 and a half inch wide tire on a daily driver unless the loaded daily weight of my rig was at least about 10,000 pounds or so just to maintain that higher pounds of pressure per square inch to the ground to avoid things like hydroplaning or even floating on top of the snow and ice or unless my tires are 37 inches tall or higher. Now, having said that, narrower tires definitely aren't going to look as cool, especially the taller the tire is. A 33 by 10 and a half inch wide looks okay and is decently proportional to most vehicles, but a 35 inch wide by 10 and a half inch wide and you might start getting some strange looks, especially on a Jeep Wrangler with high clearance aftermarket fenders. But if you prefer function over form, then nine and a half inch wide to 10 and a half inch wide tires combined with 35 inch tall tires or smaller are a great way to achieve the best overall performance. Fortunately, we do have a tire and wheel fitment gallery on our website at Trailbuilt that allows you to view similar vehicles to yours with different combinations of wheel and tire setups. So that way you guys can get a pretty good idea what your vehicle would look like with a similar size setup. But I am curious though, what do you guys think is the best height and width combination for a tire in your experience? Do you prefer a wider tire or would you rather have a narrower tire? I'd also be curious to find out what size tires you guys are running. What size lift of suspension do you have? And what is your vehicle that you're currently running the setup on? 
Would be great to hear back from all of you by letting us know in the comments below. Also guys, remember to click that link in the description for everything wheels, tires, suspension, and accessories, or to even check out our fitment gallery on our website at Trailbuilt. And guys, as always, we appreciate all of you for watching and all of your support. I'm Josh from Trailbuilt, and we'll see you guys out on the trail.